Hello everyone, welcome back to Liba Vlogs. I hope everyone is well. Um, I'm currently in Saudi Arabia. I have performed my Umrah, Alhamdulillah. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about top 10 tips uh, which uh, you need before you travel to Saudi Arabia in current circumstances and the, um, in current restrictions which are in place, which I wish I knew before I um, made my trip to Saudi Arabia. So um, let's talk about um, all these issues and all these, you know, things. Um, let's get started. So guys, um, tip number one is documentation. Um, before you travel, make sure your documentation is in place, all your tests being done. In my case, PCR was um, necessary. Now they have um, taken it off the list, so you don't need to get PCR tests done. It depends, I think, on the country you're coming from. So we were coming from UK. Yeah, um, but, but other countries, again, UK no longer requires PCR now to come into Saudi. But for other countries, which may be in the red list for Saudi, yeah. They may require a test. Uh, so make sure all documentations, your uh, visas, if you're coming on uh, a visa, make sure that documentation is ready. Or if you're coming on tourist visa, then they might, there's some kind of a document you need to show them on the airport. So it's the arrival registration form mm -hmm. that you need to fill out, regardless of whichever visa you're on. So you have to fill that in advance of coming here. In terms of the visa, there's two visas, tourism and, and Umrah visa. Umrah visa yes. So with the tourism visa, tourism visa, it's quite a straightforward process. It's slightly cheaper as well. With the Umrah visa, it's a slightly lengthier process. You have to book through the Ministry of Hajj and Umrah. Yes, and um, they book the hotels on your behalf as well. Yeah, correct. So again, you can choose what hotels you want, but it's all through their system. Um, so it's, again, we'll move on to the next tip where we talk about you know getting a tour company, but it's worthwhile getting someone to help you through that process. Um, and also with the Umrah visa, just be just remember that again, they will do some extra checking just to yes. make sure that you do not go out of the Medina and Mecca Medina, city, yes. uh, as it is. And they will be tracking that. you guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's an app that again, you I actually heard, need to yeah. download, uh, which again kind of tracks your location as well, yes. where your kind of movements are, etc. Mm. So on. And then also, Laiba, probably worthwhile mentioning that they will also need their COVID vaccine passports. Yes, so you you guys need your COVID vaccine passports in advance. Um, they will ask you to show that on the airport here in Saudi Arabia, as well as if you're traveling from London or any other country. Uh, that's the restriction and that's like a must thing from Saudi Arabia. You have to show that. And you need your boosters at least six months prior to traveling, I think. And um, you need all three boosters. And uh, for my mother-in-law, it was the fourth booster she has to get because it has to be done within six months. Yeah, yeah that was great. So that's pretty much about the first point. Let's move on to the second point, which is... travel agent mm -hmm. you need a good travel agent guys to help you out with your stay and sort out all the stuff in Saudi Arabia so if you have a good travel agent he will sort out the hotels for you the travel um, between Mecca and Medina and then um, your bread and breakfast or your you know whatever you want to book for your trip so we went for Hassan Hajj and Umrah tours uh, they uh, actually took care of all of our documentation uh, prior coming to Saudi Arabia and they also booked everything uh, for us so you need someone to do your documentation um, arrival forms or your visas everything they do it for you so thank you Hassan um, Hajj and Travels for sorting this out for me um, it just avoids like the headache as well right and uh, with Hassan Hajj and Travel we've used them before for mm, even Hajj as well for Hajj, yes. and they honestly go all over and beyond that the norm to try and make your sort of stay and you know your overall experience really worthwhile. We had a bit of like hitch hiccups in between, again yeah. outside of their control, but again they were just ready on point. They had a local contact here as well that we yes. could reach out to to get help. And he was really helpful. Yeah, he was extremely helpful. Ghazi is his name, so shout out to Ghazi. Uh, uh, thanks, thank you, Ghazi. <laughs> Um, so overall, uh, you do need a travel agent, a good travel agent, if you want your experience to be 10 out of 10. So I would recommend getting a travel agent before you travel. So let's go to tip number three, which is download relevant applications and get a SIM card as soon as you come to Saudi Arabia. So there's two applications, Twakana yes. and also Itmana. Itmana, uh, yes. You can download either one. Um, but again, you need those, right? Guys, that is must. Without that, you are risking of not even being able to enter the mosque. So why do they need it? So let me explain yeah. it. To book the Umrah, 
so let's start from first of all let's start from Medina you need to book your um, tour to not to your slot for uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Rosa uh, for women they can't really see the Rosa itself but um, there is Riyazul Jannah where which is a part of uh, Jannah and then um, you actually pray Nafal there so women are only allowed to go up to that point but for men they have to book uh, Rosa uh, you know the Rosa Rasul uh, slot so they can go and pray Nafal there and see the Rosa itself um, we had a bit of uh, experience there which is um, which was a bit distressing stressful for me and my mother-in-law we couldn't get the slot for uh, Riyazul Jannah to pray Nafal there and to see the Rosa itself not the Rosa itself to get really close to the Rosa and we were really upset so uh, we, we were trying every day these if you don't try booking um, these slots as soon as you come to Saudi Arabia you risk of not getting the slots to visit the Rosa in Medina um, for prayers it's fine you can go and pray five times that's not a problem and um, obviously they close the mosque after the prayer and you come out but to visit the Rosa there is really long queues and they are checking the app don't think they're not checking the app they are checking the app um, so that's a must and the second thing uh, when you come to Mecca um, don't think that you have to come to Mecca to book your own slot you have to book it as soon as you come to Saudi Arabia book the slot because there's different two hour slots you have to enter the mosque uh, al haram uh, within those two hours um, of booking your umrah slot and uh, for tawaf as well you have to book a slot and tawaf is only happening on the first floor of haram in mecca and um, so you can't do a tawaf right next to the kaaba only you can perform tawaf when you're doing um, umrah next to the Kaaba otherwise book your tawaf again there is a slot if you're lucky you'll find it people has booked this from months before so um, and especially the locals and um, that's what I heard about because we were struggling to book the slot so as soon as you come to so I don't want to scare you guys but as soon as you come in to Saudi Arabia inshallah you will get the slot but try booking it straight away so Am I not right? yeah and the reason why you can't book in advance of coming to Saudi Arabia is you need a sim card before you can book it so as soon as you arrive buy the sim card it roughly costs 100 reals and you mm. get like 20 gig of data 200 minutes um but you need that sim card in order for you to put your saudi arabia number verify in mm. the app and then you can book it so yeah guys as soon as you come i suggest get get a sim card even if it's from the airport just to save the headache right uh also guys there's a glitch with the twakna app so when we I came, have no experience with this <laughs> yeah yeah when we came we downloaded the app registered and it started saying we need to quarantine for five days mm. uh, which was quite strange because we came from uk there's no it's red stressful. list on uk you know we had our vaccine everything i called the customer services and again they said yeah you need to quarantine without even having looked at my personal profile they just yeah they said oh, you know the customer services i want to give it zero out of ten zero because out they 10. don't listen to you that they're not knowledgeable and they're not helpful at all so they give you the wrong information even when you go to yeah. their offices in medina we went yeah. to their office they were not helpful at all not helpful, not helpful at, at, all. at all very very rude they were they had their backs towards us and they were saying yalla haji roy roy something like you know extremely rude. dismissive and yeah basically not helpful at all and it's the last thing you want so again that stressed us out a lot because again they told us yeah you need to quarantine without even looking into our profile properly that's when we basically reached out to Hassan Hajjan Tour. So again, another shout out to Mutadi uh, from the UK branch who, who basically got us into contact with Ghazi, the local sort of support uh, person. And he told us, look, there's a glitch with the app. All you have to do is go to your profile, change the language to Saudi Arabia, and then change it back to English. And then it shows that you no longer have to quarantine, which is crazy. Like, which is crazy. Like nobody that would know that. Who would know that, right? Like who would, there's such a and specific I feel so thing. Bad. Yeah for older people those who come here because so, if you call the customer service to tell you to quarantine you're just gonna listen to them right and your whole trip is gonna be ruined um so yeah guys definitely watch out for this glitch as well and uh, this is where it comes back to you know having a good tour agent if you have so guys tip number four is praying restrictions um in medina there is no uh, praying restrictions apart from the usual um like when uh, after every prayer you, they close the mosque and you um, have to leave the mosque uh, after half an hour or 15 minutes uh, whereas in Mecca there is quite strict uh, praying restrictions you can't pray next to the Kaaba and um, only uh, on the ground floor if you're doing Umrah if you're performing Umrah you can go to the ground floor otherwise for all the praying and Tawaf you have to go to the first floor so just keep in mind that you you will be able to see Kaaba but you won't be able to go get, get close to it and you won't be even if you're performing Umrah you won't be able to touch Kaaba they have just stopped everywhere 
so uh, point number five is food um, guys uh, do try the local cuisines I've tried different um, cuisines here do check out my um, another video on food uh, food is pretty nice around here if you know what to eat so do check out my other video Let's and go also I suggest even getting breakfast as well with your package oh definitely yeah. yes that's um, something because you don't want to uh, you know rush in the morning because just after the prayer you are actually coming from harem you can just go and do your breakfast in the hotel rather than going around and looking for breakfast places and there isn't many um, I would say um, go for the breakfast with your hotel Tip number six is dry cleaning guys um, dry cleaning is something your hotel provides for you but if you want to go for a cheaper option just get out of your hotel and around harem there's a lot of people they're giving out their cards and they they do it quite quick like within three hours slot and um, the price is a lot cheaper than the hotel prices so that's something if you want to you know um, enjoy it, especially the service um, so you can use dry cleaning from outside Guys, the point number seven is traveling from Medina to Mecca to perform your Umrah. If you first come to Medina, if you're coming directly from your country of um, where you live, if you're coming to Medina, you have to, um, if you're staying there for a few days and then you're coming to Mecca, you have to um, do your Ihram, like if you, you have to do your Niyat from, for your Umrah from Medina, Mekat, there is a Mekat which is on your way to Mecca. So you have make sure you stop there and do your um, Ihram and stuff from there and then come to Medina to perform your Umrah. And then again, traveling, uh, this was something sorted out by uh, my travel agent. You can get local drivers to take you from Medina to Mecca. I know about them because I've lived in Saudi Arabia quite a um, very long time but I would recommend going for your tour guy um, your tour company to sort this out for you because uh, then you can trust the person and you know um, it's the right person and taking you actually on time because you booked the slot in Mecca for your Umrah so make sure you leave on time in Medina it's very important you leave on time and um, I know the traveling is like four and a half to five hours but you have make Give sure you continue to your six to eight hours as well, six to eight hours because once you are in Mecca you have to check in your hotel before you run for Umrah because you have to put your luggage somewhere so definitely look into this guys guys my tip number eight is just um, general performing Umrah um, if you're traveling with elderly you might need a wheelchair or uh, there is a motorbike kind of a scooter um, you can make your elderly sit at the back of the scooter and then um, that's when you're performing say um, if you are doing a tawaf, try to do it closer to the um, Kaaba. Um, if you want to go to the first floor, you can do the tawaf there. It's a lot more, um, like there's a lot more space. Uh, but downstairs, I would recommend even. But if you are doing it with elderly and you are on a, they are on a wheelchair or a scooter, you have to do it on the first floor. You can't do it near. It's just by by foot you can do next to the Kaaba. Um, watch out for wheelchairs. As well. Watch out for wheelchairs. Uh, around the harem area because they're not near you when you are doing a tawaf they're only near you when you are entering the harem or Same. leaving um, they can injure you and it can be really really painful um, uh, also uh, find a place where if, if you do get lost um, um, you know just find a place like if there's a green light there there's um, a door called Babi Abdulaziz you can just meet all of you guys there keep your phones with you when you're performing your umrah not to you know go on internet just to you know if in case you're lost um, so these are just a few tips just keep it in mind um, and that's pretty much about it guys so guys tip number nine is shopping around harem um, so there is a lot of shops and nice places around uh, Medina Haram as well and in Mecca. So in Medina there is shops so you can go to different shops for souvenirs and go shopping. Um, wow, for so um, especially in Mecca, you have a hypermarket here right next to the harem. There is a mall. Um, you can go to the mall. There's a hypermarket, and on the other side there is also Bindaud. They pretty much have all the souvenirs, food. Um, amenities anything you want uh, you can actually get it from there and on good price um, and easily available you literally walk into the mall and you see hypermarket and if you come out of the mall you see um, without my hotel entrance is actually one of the entrances actually through the mall so I can I can see a lot of shops for oud for gold for taspi or souvenirs for prayer mats um, I would recommend because there's a lot of authentic and good shops in the mall itself so do try these shops but you can can go outside and have a look as well but overall um, there is a good shopping place around Haram. 
our last tip um, and the tenth tip um, that is uh, gold shopping in Saudi Arabia, especially in uh, Medina. Let's start from Medina. In Medina, there's a lot of nice gold shops there. People are really nice um, in terms of when they're serving you, very friendly staff there in the shops. Um, and the designs are pretty uh, beautiful, I would say. Um, I bought a few rings and a um, few things for my daughter and my um, sister and my mom uh, but Medina I think is the best place for gold shopping um, but when you come to Mecca there is uh, not many shops around Haram but in Medina there is right next to the Haram um, but in Mecca you have to go, uh, go quite like you have to walk for 15-20 minutes to find these gold shops there's few in um, the mall but I didn't like the designs they're very old-fashioned uh, and even when I went to the shops which are a bit far from um, Haram I didn't really um, like the designs and the stuff was not very friendly um, they were a bit rude so I would recommend doing your gold shopping from Medina keep it in mind trust me you will uh, appreciate this tip in Medina they have beautiful designs and they have lovely lovely people there so this is the end of the video guys I hope you enjoyed these tips keep in, them in mind before you travel um, and um, also um, do let me know if you guys know any more tips comment down below um, and um, I think this is the end of the video then I hope you guys enjoyed the video look after yourself I'll see you next time don't forget to like subscribe and comment down below take care bye bye I love this